Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. We have folks from all across the continent and across, uh, across the hemispheres here. Um, my name is Matt Kellogg. I'm the VP of Sales for Media Creek. And I am really, really happy to be a part of this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to be spending the next 55 to 60 minutes talking about really the best practices uh, from a remote workplace, which we are all now getting very, very used to during this uh, COVID-19 time. We really have no idea when things will get back to normal. So the idea again is, you know, sharing some ideas. Maybe we picked up some new habits or some new tricks on, on really everything that's ranging in, in the audio space today, whether, whether you're on air in marketing, you're in sales or underwriting, if you're in technology, if you're working in the podcast space, if you're working in the radio space or in the streaming space, I think we all picked up uh, some things to share. Um, we got a great set of panelists um, and I will turn everything over now to our uh, moderator, uh, a hero of mine, uh, continuing every day, Rocky Thomas. So Rocky, take it away. Uh, thanks, Matt, for the great intro. Well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, changing times, great time to go ahead and talk about how we've been working and functioning in this new reality. Um, today, I'm honored to have a really diverse group of panelists to discuss these workplace changes. Um, over to the, I'd say my far right, is uh, CJ Reltbeck, who's the Director of Corporate Support at Colorado Public Broadcasting. I have Russ Lloyd, Director of Technology at Pittsburgh Community Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, Sharon Taylor, who is the Managing Director of Omni Studio, who is also, uh, which is a podcast platform in CMS. And then Justin Ruloff, um, VP of Operations of Live 365. What I find really interesting is that we have uh, two broadcasters. We also have someone who's been working in the podcast space as well as a SaaS platform and Live 365, which is also a technology SaaS platform. So we have a nice diversity of groups here, which is really, um, really exciting to me. So um, the old adage goes that when one door closes, another opens. Uh, so, you know, when businesses doors literally have to close to COVID-19, what are the, the, the new doors that you have discovered? I'm going to kick this one over to Justin. So um, what have you, what have you discovered since COVID-19, like some new, like a uh, better streamlined communication, productivity, what, what have you seen uh, since everything's changed? So, I mean, thank you, Rocky, for the intro there. Um, you know, we've had a unique situation at Live 365 as we were already a full telecommute organization. So we were at a, a nice advantage to be able to kind of transition and, and really a lot of us kind of joked we had very little change within some of our workflows for sure and kind of the day to day because we actually, you know, we always were, everyone was already working from home, everyone already was kind of the tele, you know, the telework infrastructure that we had. The big thing that I kind of saw and I think something that we tried to focus on as an organization, one of the big things we tried to, to look at here is it was a very, you know, difficult time for folks, right? You know, there's a lot of things that were going on at times. And so while, you know, yeah, people had more time and honestly, we probably saw productivity go up a little bit because folks had, you know, what else could you really do aside from work, of course, at that time. But what we definitely saw is you know, there's a lot, people are dealing with a lot of things. You know, we're in a unique situation where we have folks from all over the world and in different areas, we're seeing different problems at times. So, you know, we'd see spikes in the outbreak in one area where somebody might be de you know, dealing with it specifically there and other areas hadn't really dealt with it yet. And so having to kind of be open with that and understanding to the entire organization and then more importantly, really trying to understand what our employees are dealing with at the time and trying to incorporate some activities that, that take in their health. You know, like we, we've always kind of done a hangout session. Obviously when you're a telecommute organization, you're, you're really, you miss some of that social aspect, right? Like some of that hanging out together, the, the water cooler talk that you might have at that time. And so I think during those times, it's very, even more important when kind of the outbreak is going on. And so kind of trying to simulate some of those events, trying to do some hangouts with folks and try to really incorporate more kind of fun, even into the day-to-day -day workflow, I think was a super crucial thing that we, you know, that we really tried to work on and and continue or kind of even taking away from that, trying to continue to work on that. So that was kind of my biggest takeaway, I'd say, from the period. Sharon, Russ, CJ, anything on your side? Yeah, I mean, we saw separate, uh, similar things. So 
I mean, we're down in Australia, but we're part of a global company that has got offices kind of all over the world. So it would be, you know, a flare up in one place and, you know, normal for the other. Similar to you, Justin, we've got remote workers everywhere, but we always had an office environment. And I think a few things, like it became very overwhelming to talk about for a lot of people. So we like, you know, quarantined the COVID-19 chat into its own Slack channel so that people could choose when they wanted to engage with it versus when they wanted to just focus on work. Um, we made it really clear from the outset that whatever people needed to do when they needed to do it to fit in with their schedule or to feel that little bit safer or more comfortable, like if you wanted to go to the shops at 2 p.m. because it was quieter, just put a message in Slack, go get your groceries and then, you know, basically like make up the hours kind of later and do what you needed to do. Um, similar to you, we've, we've always been kind of like remote from yeah everyone else and it's been a bit of a change uh, with everyone remote and trying to emulate that office environment. So we do lots of things each week to try and, you know, there's so much that you pick up as an employee of a company just overhearing conversations and knowing what's going on in a company. And so we try and do like ask me anything sessions where most of the time it's just me staring at a camera going, what else have I done this week? Um, but uh, but yeah, like just trying as much as possible to make it that terrible, like COVID normal is what everyone's saying. Yeah, no, I agree. And and so we're on the tech company, I think it's, it's been a little bit of an easier transition. CJ, you have a great facility. I, I love Colorado Public Radio's facility down in town. This has to have been hard for you guys. I mean, because you have such cohesion there day to day. So how, how have you guys been dealing with all of this? Well, and that, that's a great point, Rocky. I love our building too, and I've been in it once in the last seven months. So I do miss it. Um, it being broadcasters, of course, it was a huge challenge. It's like, you know, literally overnight, we had to move all of the broadcast operations to people's homes. And as you can imagine, some hosts are better set up to do that than others. But we made it through. We have people broadcasting from their, their closets, from their basements. And, you know, they're, they're anything but optimal broadcasting conditions. But the IT team and the engineering team worked wonders. They gave people the equipment they needed to sound good. They helped them soundproof rooms if they needed that. And it was a, it was a huge challenge, especially on the programming side. Yeah. On the sales side, we were lucky. My team has worked remotely two days a week for the last year and a half. Oh. So we were already kind of equipped to do it. And the biggest challenge we've had in doing it full time is we miss our culture. You know, we're, we're social animals. We do remote happy hours. We tell people to take time off to, that they need to just relax and take care of their families. But you still, you still miss that element of the culture that you get from interacting face-to-face -face every day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and Russ, I know you have a little bit more of a technical production background. So like, what have you, I mean, I, when I hear, you know, ha moving, I think of a, a radio studio and I just don't, and all the racks and everything that goes into making quality audio, audio sound. So what, talk me through this. How, how has that been working? <laughs> Oh, well, first, that makes me think of that Weird Al movie with the hi-fi with that guy who is the transmitter. Yeah, I, look, I saw that one time. I was like, wow, people really think I do that. I really <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but um, to compliment what CJ said, that was exactly it. I mean, for us, it was an on-off switch. Uh, you know, um, mid-March, mid everybody went home, and that was it. And, you know, we haven't come back. Uh, now... Well, we do not broadcast similar. We do not broadcast uh, quite the way that CJ described uh, the way that Colorado is handling that from home. Um, ours goes back a couple of years in sort of uh, the preparation for this moment. So we did a lot of work in 18 and 19 that just was time, you know, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. So we kind of fell in that, that, that time and we had just outfitted uh, the whole building. Uh, we just redid the whole thing. So that was timely. Um, so we were able to walk away from it and, uh, you know, and run it. We kept our hosts there for our talk station, right? Um, 
and they remain there. So we essentially, we didn't completely leave the building, but we had a vital, we had two on-air hosts, three on-air hosts that would, uh, that do their, that still do that. We do have the, one of our innovations was the Comrex, the use of Comrex and tie lines to connect all that stuff, right? Which is what CJ was referencing. Um, we set it up to be able to use it and we haven't. Um, okay, I'm gonna ask a stupid to. question. I, what is okay. Comrex? Comrex is just a point to point um, uh, proprietary uh, hardware that is okay. links the audio, high quality audio. So basically, it's like almost like a, a, v, a super VPN that's only used for that, like an old ISDN. Not quite a VPN, but just for audio, like an ISDN. It would be a, a modern ISDN. Gotcha. Uh, I'm okay. not using very non-technical terms, and uh, other engineers can certainly send me an email and slap me. That's fine. Um, that's, I'm not that technical on the broadcast engineering side, so I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> I agree. Um, but that was big for us. Um, uh, our music station, WIP, uh, did was already transitioned to a, a voice track heavy and they just remain that but that for us was we did not do uh the the streaming point to point streaming we were more file moving we we did it with files so that's how we did it um yeah i can pause there but i i could go on and on no, 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 what, no, what we learned i think it's this why why i love about you know audio companies in general is that we tend to be pretty scrappy and movable really fast if we have to be. Um, I, I, I really, I feel for our compadres in TV a little bit, I'll be honest with you, yeah. because I couldn't even imagine trying to studio like an actual TV studio. So I think we've been really fortunate because audio does have that mobility, which is really the strength of the, more, of the format is that we're able to go ahead and do this. So um, I'm curious, so have, have you guys done any like major, so, we're, Justin talked about how some of the employees are starting to be more productive because let's be honest, we did, a lot of us don't have a whole lot of things to be doing, so we tend to work, which is kind of you know, a good and a bad thing. Um, it, is there anything that, like, uh, like Sharon, did, were you guys, are, have you guys been able to keep up on a, like a product roadmap, or have you been able to you know, continue to innovate you know, with all this craziness going on right now still? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we're an agile shop, so it's, we were really lucky that <laughs> we just this. Keep on <laughs> yeah, we're just like, well, now you've got 24 workable hours in the day, guys. So let's do four sprints a fortnight. No, um, we didn't. <laughs> I should be really cool. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, uh, probably what was easier, what was better communication around the world for us. Like suddenly we were in this position where the time zones mattered less because as everyone moved to more flexible hours, we could do more and collaborate more with people in the Montreal or the US offices yeah. because maybe they wanted to be awake later because they had to deal with kids and stuff during the day, yeah. which on one hand is great. On the other hand is hope you guys still get some downtime. Um, but that allowed us to move faster with joint projects that we've shipped, which was really exciting. Um, and it was almost like that time zone disappeared for an extra couple of hours a day, which was something we've not experienced for the better part of eight years or something doing Omni Studio. So, um, that was good. But yeah, apart from that, we just new features, kept shipping things. Um, we luckily don't need to, like, I couldn't imagine being like a real estate agent in this time. Uh, you know, everything that we build and sell uh, and ship out is in the cloud. So, yeah, it's been relatively easier. Yeah. Well, it's, it, and I think it's been, it, it, what's been really impressed for me, because I, I, my Colorado Public Radio is my, because I'm in Colorado, so I listen to them a lot, is I couldn't even tell a difference. I mean, I still can't tell the difference. I mean, honestly, it's like, Good. and that to me, and I say that about ad insertion, that the best type of ad insertion is one that you don't know is being inserted. And I would say the best type of production is one that you would never know that has changed. And I think that is just phenomenal. And I think that, you know, when you have these type of um, challenges, I think you, you really start to realize what, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's hard on the team, but I think it's also a boost for them because they can realize what can actually happen if you really focus your energy on a common goal of like, hey, we got to keep these doors open, we keep on broadcasting, this is what we do. So, so I think that the, the technology side of it, we, we've all kind of gotten really, you know, pretty, pretty well good 
at this at this point. We're, I still haven't figured out how to admit people, not admit people with passwords with Zoom. So if anyone has an idea on that one, would love to know about that because that one still drives me crazy. But I think we're all learning on this. But I think the area that's probably got, that's been the hardest to manage. And I think this is more of your, your house here, CJ, is underwriting and advertising and sponsorships and membership services. Um, I know you guys just finished up a, a membership drive. How has it been going? I mean, from all of that part of the revenue side of your business, because that's really the one that's to me has been very up and down. You are exactly right about that. And I'll start with the good news. So we did, <laughs> we did just finish one of the most successful uh, membership drives we have had in years. Fortunately, our base of support here is just, it, it's been phenomenal, I have to say. Our, our members and our donors are just uh, unbelievable. So that side of the picture is great. On the underwriting side, it's been the craziest year I have ever seen in the 30 plus years I've been leading sales teams. Uh, from the period from the middle of March through the end of April, we lost 20% of our annual revenue. Just uh, all we could do was take cancellations. Oh. And it's, that is so hard for anyone who's ever led a sales team knows how hard that is. You know, we're so used to putting money on the books to take it off the books is just, it's deflating. Yeah. So that was, uh, it, but it's understandable. Businesses aren't open. They cannot afford to market. So we, once we got through the initial phase of that, we took a step back and said, okay, what do we do from here? How do we pull ourselves out of this? And we have the most wonderful CEO who said, okay, here's what we're going to do. He wrote a letter that we sent to every single sponsor we've had on in the past 12 months and saying, we understand what you're going through. We are here to help. When the time comes back that, that you are ready to, to start marketing again, we will match your campaign dollar for dollar. Um, wow. uh, so to just to help jumpstart some of these businesses, our biggest category of business comes from the categories that have been the hardest hit. The restaurants, the entertainments, the nonprofits, the cultural organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, higher education, healthcare, all of those sectors have been hit unbelievably hard by COVID. And so we are trying to do everything we can to help support them now that some of them are ready to, to come back a little bit and do our part to be good partners with them. But it's, it's been a crazy year. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Well, and I think the challenge comes in is that it's, you have, it opens up and then it closes down. It opens, yeah. some areas do. That's it. It's the uncertainty that's the hardest for all of us. We yeah. don't, nobody knows how to plan. Nobody knows how to, the, the people that used to sign 12 month contracts with us now are coming back for three months or six weeks because they, they don't know. The future's just too uncertain. It's crazy. Yeah, I can definitely see CJ, it. in your area, is, is, is it just now starting to come back? Just now starting to come Just back, now. we are seeing the restaurants have been able to do outdoor dining for a couple of months, you, you, the, the very limited indoor dining. That's been great while the weather has been nice here. Now they're looking at, okay, it's going to start snowing next month. Now what do we do? And it's yeah. just, there, there's so much uncertainty and so much expense with having, they're having to ramp up to do outdoor heaters, tents, whatever it would take to keep outdoor dining going. It's, it's a wild card for everything. And not to mention the, the performance, the performing arts. Oh. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. I know, and it's, we, I, and I, Pittsburgh is similar to, you know, Denver, very in market size and everything else too, which is like they, strong, strong orchestras, strong performance groups, strong everything, and a really tight knit community organization around supporting performance arts as well as arts in general. And when that just, and that's, I would say probably a probably a nice size category for you guys. And just to see, I mean, that one, I don't even know what that's even going to look like because really the experience of the Colorado Symphony Orchestra is the experience of sitting in an auditorium typically and hearing it. And so I think that's going to be one that's going to be really, you know, different as we move forward. I, Russ, how's it been? I mean, Pittsburgh been doing it similar to, uh, similar to uh, Colorado as well? It's by uh, the cultural district and the cultural arts uh, 
absolutely have suffered. Um, and I know that uh, our teams, our underwriting teams, our membership teams, our CEO and leadership teams have all been, you know, uh, rounding those up and, 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 and meeting with those foundations and, and everybody is, well, at first everyone was about feeding right? Getting everybody fed and, and what needed to get done. And, and I don't know if it's coming or turning the corner on that now. I can't speak to that, but I know that uh, the rest of the management team, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with the foundations. I deal with the transmitters, but I know that they do a, a very, uh, are, are always involved uh, yeah. with those. So, but we have, I mean, everything's close. I mean, I go, I'm a, I'm a rock guy. Uh, you know, we have, we have a rock station. I haven't seen a concert, um, you know, since february that's very sad that's a that's a that's a long that's the longest streak for sure yeah and it's hard everybody. all of us, all of us get into the industry because we love music we love performing yeah. arts we love yeah. spoken word we love all this stuff and then like poetry slams i think at least that's how i am i mean i am that type of person who likes to be irl in the real life and i think it's been really kind of tough when you start getting twitchy because you haven't you know I might even break out my recorders and start performing mm -hmm. myself again because it's like hey. I need to move something. Here. So I might like <laughs> dust off my music chops and start doing it myself to probably my, my, my kids uh, will not be happy about that. So as far as it's so a we, you know, we we're I think we're starting to see some glimmering of hope like on the advertising and underwriting side. It's just it's been very piecemeal. And I think that's been one of the challenges. I mean, it's how do you keep morale up with salespeople when they can't press flesh? I'll be honest with you, CJ, I'm kind of curious. That, that's that been the tricky part is, you know, the for the first, I would say the first six weeks of the lockdown, my team was saying, I can't make a sales call. How do I make a sales call to these people when they're, you know, they're either closed or they're suffering beyond belief. And I said, we're not gonna do sales calls. Yeah. Reach out, ask, check on them, just see yeah. how they're doing. Just keep that human connection going. And I have a very, I'm fortunate to have a very seasoned sales team yeah. that, that bounce back from this unbelievably well. Um, they understand that this is a unique situation. It's nothing, it's not a reflection on their sales ability. No. Our business is down so much. So we, we just tried to keep the human connection alive, whether it was through, you know, checking in on a phone call, sending emails, posting useful things on LinkedIn. We've started using LinkedIn Sales Navigator so we can do more targeted posts and that's been helpful. So we're just kind of reading the clients as we talk to them and saying, you know, hey, what do you need? How can we help? Yeah. And, and so uh, what's interesting is that, you know, like I always say, when one door closes, another one opens is because you know, I, I, I've been, seeing, been reading a lot about, you know, I think radio in general was pretty freaked out when they, when people stopped driving in cars, because mm -hmm. that's yeah. kind of like the holy grail of a lot of people to how they're listening. But I would say, I'll, you know, Sharon, then I'm going to, you know, kick over to you, Justin. So, you know, how, how has business been from a podcasting standpoint? Are people consuming you know, because that, that was another area that people were commuting, whether they're on, you know, on trains or in their car. I mean, I'm that type of habitual podcast listener myself. How have you seen, like, how has things been changing on your side with consumption? Yeah, uh, we saw a slight dip um, in the first few weeks when everyone, like, when there was that mass of uncertainty. Um, and then that picked up pretty quickly. I think as new habits formed, people found new time in the day. Um, I'll admit, like, I mean, I'm what would be classed as like a power podcast listener and to try and find like I don't have a commute anymore and so the three daily podcasts that I would listen to when do I do that you know um, I had some staff that made a commute so they made sure that they left their house did a walk around the block to arrive at work and then they do the same when they leave work um, and so they squeeze some podcast listening in then we saw it largely pick back up I mean I think the beauty and the most amazing thing about the audio format is that we can change things pretty quickly and you can change programming. So, you know, I think it felt like overnight there were 600,000 more coronavirus daily news podcasts that appeared, you know, and as, you know, and as consumption of those maybe waned because people wanted a break from it, we saw comedy format kind of get another kick. Um, you know, it, 
it's been about watching the trends and figuring out what people might want as a new habit and a new listening experience. We're doing pretty well. Like we're, we're at better than pre COVID numbers now, like to give you an idea of how listening, you know, has changed. And our parent company obviously does a lot of streaming. They're seeing, you know, good bounce backs as well. I think, you know, to the first question, when we started this, you don't have a radio in your car anymore. And maybe COVID has collapsed a timeline that all of us were facing in the audio world and looking down, you know, the barrel of, but people want that same experience. So maybe they're playing their radio at home that they used to get in the office. So yeah, I mean, you just find new ways to put the things in your life that you enjoy and that you're used to, right? Like normalcy is so important to people right now. And I think audio is a huge part of that podcast and radio alike. Agreed. How, how's Live 365 been going through all this? Because that's more of a linear kind of format, Justin. Sure. Well, you know, first off, Sharon, that's super interesting. I mean, I have the, yeah. kind of the same problem, right? Like, I'm like, man, my audio books have gone down. I was kind of assessing it as you're talking, like my listening habits have changed. I'm still like absorbing audio, just in different forms, right? Like I'm doing different techniques around the house, the walk around the block concept. That was a really good one. So I think you know, I mean, we're seeing on a listener side of things, we've seen kind of the same trend, a little bit up. We saw a small, at the beginning, I think everything gets spiked and you saw, I mean, news channels, you would see heavy spikes, but other, you know, kind of ancillary content, you didn't see too much. So it would take a little bit of a hit, you know, but aside from that, we've seen pretty much just a transition into different devices, different listening, you know, formats, different ways people are intaking. I think we'll continue to see that. I think we'll continue to see it. As this continues to go on, we'll see more of a diverse thing. Oddly enough, as devices get more diverse, you do see desktop picking up because people are using the computer a lot more. They're stuck to that computer and, and not so much on the go. So you definitely saw a pickup of that. The, more, the most interesting one of the business I think we saw during COVID is we saw a heavy increase in new broadcasters coming to the platform. And so, you know, what happened is basically you had a whole lot of people that suddenly had a lot of free time, whether they were furloughed, whether they were just at home, just generally more time on their hands. They were looking to pick up hobbies, possibly hobbies that could turn into an entrepreneurial type venture. And so we saw a heavy increase in folks coming to the platform, very much new, you know, very much it was definitely a heavy time for our support team taking in tickets from folks that are really just trying to get into the broadcasting habit, really understand what it's even all about. And so that was probably the biggest takeaway I'd say from at least the business line uh, come COVID. Yeah, and and I think that it's I, I, to, to like about habits. I th I mean I'm starting to get a little bit paranoid because I have so many of these smart speaker devices in every part of my house now. I think the biggest one for me is adding it to the laundry room. I was, and I was like, you know, somebody should like do podcasts based on the 10 minutes it takes me to do a laundry change. <laughs> I was like, Cause right. I find myself gravitating more towards those ones that I can kind of complete in certain times. But I also have been appreciating some of the, I don't know if it's innovation or adoption on some of the platforms for smart speakers is the ability to like pick up where I left off. And I think that's really important as we're kind of moving through, you know, piecemealing our time into different places on some of the longer form um, podcast content, because I, I do want to pick it up. I do love my longer formats. It's just, I don't have the longer drives that I used to have. So I think it's, it's really, you know, I, I, I appreciate when platforms are able to kind of like bookmark and save my place. I'm able to go ahead and pick it up in a, in a much easier way that I'm not trying to scrub and find where I was on everything. So and what I want to ask about is communication. So uh, how are you guys, so we talked earlier about cohesion and hangouts. Is it, is it Slack all the time? Is it Google Hangouts? How are you guys collaborating with your team in a way that kind of emulates a water cooler without being annoying? I mean, and having all these, it's, it's such a fine line, guys. I mean, it's, you, could get, you could get buried in Slack or in, in any of your, I, I'm just curious what you guys are using and how you're, how you're facilitating communication so it doesn't become overwhelming for folks. Anybody can go and take that. I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we've always used Slack. Um, I've used more Zoom than ever before in my life. Justin, when you sent that email going, is anyone familiar with Slack, with Zoom for the, for the panel? I'm like, e -e -e, unfortunately, yes, so much Zoom. Um, but yeah, we, we've changed. We do daily stand-ups for all the different teams. Um, we do rotating weekly 
mass Zoom calls of both a social kind and then also a more work related, like just to try and have chatter. And sometimes it's just silence and no one can think of anything to say, but it's nice to see each other's faces and that's reassuring. And people can put their cameras on or off and whatever makes them kind of comfortable. We do a mass company wide one every month just to get updates. Um, it's really like the dial of communication has been turned way up. And then it's just about giving the option of employees, whether they want to engage or not. Because some days you're just going to feel not great. And maybe you don't want to go to, you know, wind down at 4 p.m. And that's completely fine. Like, you know, whatever you need to do. And I think our job is to make as many opportunities as possible for people to communicate and understand when and if they don't want to. Yep. DJ uh, Russ? We're a, yeah, we're, a th we're an Office 365 house, um, but we have not dialed up all those features yet. Uh, so we are a, a Zoom heavy, um, and we, we were, to reiterate what Sharon said, you know, monthly and weekly meetings of leadership teams, and then you know, quarterly meetings of all staff and, uh, you know, benefits packages. We have to roll those out and things. So we have, we, we see everybody, uh, we don't do as much of the social uh, that we do some and, and it's great. Um, and it may be that I don't do it. I'll specifically say that I have children and that's difficult for me, but uh, there is a social uh, trivia. They do some fantastic trivia just amongst the stuff. And so there's some fun stuff like that. But uh, it definitely doesn't replace, you know, eating the free bagels in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, do you guys use Slack, Google Hangouts, or how do you guys communicate in short form? Is it mostly email driven or what are you guys doing? It's a combination of things. The company as a whole uses Slack. I, you know, it's like that's one more app I have not really bought into yet. <laughs> All yeah, me too. <laughs> but so we're, we're pretty uh, Google driven. We do a lot of Google. Uh, meet. Um, we do weekly sales meetings, uh, pretty much monthly all staff meetings. And then we also as a team try to do a monthly happy hour. And it's fun virtual happy hour. And it's it's interesting because my team tells me when it's time to do it. It's like, hey, we haven't done this for a while. So why don't you schedule something? <laughs> So we miss each other. There's no doubt that we do miss each other. I know you guys have a, a very, you have a very tight sales team over there with like, I call legacy sellers. I mean, they've known each other in the market forever, whether yes. they were working together at this stage or not. So I can definitely see that they kind of miss each other, which is, you know, really hard. One thing that I, I appreciate of the new COVID, I always, I'm always the girl who like tries, tries to find the positivity. So I've been working from home since uh, 2003. So in, in the early days, it's, it was, I was always having that fear of noise in the background. Like, you know, if a kid walked in or something happened, I had to put my metal voice to be like, be quiet right now. I'm, you know, I'm just like, doing, or I'm doing the hand thing of, you know, shooing them away. I feel what's been kind of nice is that it's actually okay if your dog walks through or a kid walks through or something like that, which has taken a lot of pressure off of me personally, like where I felt like I always had that pressure of having a, a very pristine, you know, type of uh, conversation environment. And I do try to still respect that, but I think that's been kind of a nice thing. I think we're all getting a little bit okay with knowing that there's probably something that's going to happen. The, the computer's probably got, your internet might, uh, might die, you might lose connection. We're all in these kind of like weird times right now. And I think it's giving a lot of people a little bit, I call it grace, you know, giving people a little bit more grace about what's going on just because there's so many different scenarios of what people are trying to juggle right now. And I think that's been, I think it's been kind of, it's been nice, you know, and I think it kind of humanizes what we've been going through a little bit more. Okay, I got a question. So when we have all of the, all this craziness is going on, sometimes I find my best ideas for innovation happen when I think that I don't have any time to think about it. Like all of a sudden it popped up, like, how can we fix this problem? Has, have you guys innovated anything like new or different, either could be a sales process, a, a different way to look at business or a, a product that, or a product feature request that has kind of come out of this, uh, out of these times right now. I wouldn't say that we've done anything remarkable in that area, but yeah, I, I think we're, we're paying more attention to categories and emerging categories of business 
that maybe we hadn't thought about before. Home health care has come from out of oh. nowhere. Would not that's not a typical underwriter for us, and yet we're we're seeing a lot of traction in that area. So we're we're just kind of having to change the way we prospect, change the way we think about traditional business because nothing is traditional anymore. Yes, probably won't be. Um, I could speak on. Uh, I don't say that we had any real like breakthroughs. I have tons of good ideas, and I will say that we. Uh, we just got on with um, Empire and with uh, and Justin uh, and I, I, like for for me that that platform alone like I just got introduced to that a year ago. I knew the old one, uh, but that's not the same. So like, there's a ton of innovation for us right there, and that's not a plug. That's genuine, uh, and so I'm super excited about that. And that just got started this month, so. You know, Justin and I have it. This is our first meeting, so that's very exciting. So I'll plug that. There's a ton of innovation available. There. Well, that's um, just something you're gonna dig into, which is good time to study it all up, right? It's kind of nice <laughs> when you time to like, like actually translate a platform when you're. I'm not. It's it's hard because everything's changing, but what's nice is that you're able to use those tools to find new ways to innovate within your own company, which is great. Yeah, and we. I would say. Um, um, I can tell you where I've want my next innovation to go uh, where our team needs our biggest uh, change for me. And that's with our phone, the way our way, the way our actual phone system works. Not, we have, we have an audio, you know, we have an audio set of phones that go on the air, but the phone for the building and the phone for the business side and the sales teams and all that. And the voice over IP is so uh, elaborate and customizable just you can do so much and we just haven't taken advantage of that yet and we're moving in that direction but when we do um, that will all, it will it will take a big huge chunk of everything that we do and wrap it up in one bill and some of our innovation came from the newsroom we have a pretty large newsroom that really work hard and are very out there in the field a lot you know doing great reporting and that's rare and we're I, I would argue we were, I think we're the biggest newsroom in Pittsburgh, right? Uh, I, if we're not, we're really close. So we had some innovation there with using um, where they would usually go into a, a news booth and record an interview. You know, we would just hop it up to the cloud and bounce, bounce it off of a third party and just have it record there and then pull it down. And then they could mess with it there. And that was temporary. And then they themselves, uh, found a workaround with the cell phone, which I'm not gonna talk about, but that's the, um, with like, you know, they had to do something. They, I'm so great, right? Because I had my own set of things that I was dealing with and my team and our team and then the newsroom was able to make up a couple of workarounds. Um, we use News Boss, which allowed them to very easily get, you know, uh, it, it laid it out beautifully remotely. So to say that we innovated anything, we just innovated new workflows really, but I would say that the innovation that could have occurred would be around our, um, the way that we ingested the files and like the manipulation of the of the automation system, right? Getting, uh, moving this file from here through a VPN, you know, didn't want to move that way. So we had to, we had to make a, you know, copy that file in a different way, right? Um, you start so, learning that all pipes don't necessarily fit exactly as you thought they were going to fit. Yeah, need a bigger so hammer. You became, you became a really good plumber very fast. <laughs> yeah, somehow. I don't know, no, good, it depends on who you ask. Things aren't like aren't aren't compatible until you're actually getting into it, and you're like, this should really be easy. Why is this not easy when it should be really easy? So I think I think the biggest innovation a lot of people have seen is on process. But I'll be honest with you guys, process is one of the hardest things to change. And so the yeah. fact that 
I hate to say it, but the fact that we were forced to do this is was something that was kind of on the, we all talked about remote work. We all talked about like, we should be doing this. It, it adds to work-life balance. It reduces carbon emissions, having people come in every day. I mean, we all talked about doing this and now we were just forced to basically figure this out. And I think that on the, on the technical and production side, what's really exciting is that we figured out how to make audio very remote. We figured out how to go to live, the podcast. We figured out all of these ways that, let's be honest, they've probably been on all of our roadmaps thinking of, eh, that's a nice half. And now we've actually made, figured out a way to make it a must have, which I, which I think we all would like to have probably more months to do it. But when you are kind of crunched, it's pretty miraculous what teams can go ahead and do. Um, I, I do have her, one point. Real quick, real quick, Rocky, I'm sorry. I will tell you that the single most important thing that I could impart to anybody listening to me right now uh, would be that if you walked away from anything, it would be to turn on two-factor authentication for your personal stuff and oh. everything that your business does. Yep. Number one, do that. That's that's what I learned. Look at Justin's not not educated. All of us do this recently, yeah. like a couple. Months ago. That's what I learned. <laughs> yeah, so, it's uh, if that's not done, do that. Yes. Yes. And I totally agree with you. I think two-factor is if you're not doing it, definitely doing it. Anything, especially your core systems on your radio station, guys. Yeah, it's your VPN. Time, yeah. They get snoopy, just saying. I'm not saying it's it's just people start to get, not nice people start to get snoopy on your infrastructure, which is- Well, really no, that just want. always exists. Uh, that That's just a reality. People have more time to be script kitties right now. Well, well that's no, they those people are always script kitties. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't, we maybe we got some new ones. I mean, probably if that's what you're saying, yeah, but exactly. uh, you know, yeah. Protect those VPN tunnels. Yes, yes, yes. Protect them. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, before I take any questions from the audience, I have a quite uh, for the folks who don't, uh, well, actually Sharon, cause you're kind of hybrid. So I just, I know your answer. So I'm going to like, I want to ask, okay, tomorrow, three months from now, we're through this. How, what is your workplace going to look back, look like, or what are you planning on having your workplace look like when, you know, everything is, gets back to a normalcy? What, what do you think? What do you predict? Are you guys going to continue to remote or what is, I, I mean, I'm just kind of curious what the office workplace is going to start looking like. No, we'll go back. I mean, we don't have an office right now in Australia. Like all of this coincided with what was meant to be an office move. And then we were like, maybe not an office move right now and we moved to our homes um but we will go back i mean we will probably try and be even more flexible than we were before like whereas before it was a could i work from home one day a week it'll be you know more of a free-for-all try and keep the communication up so that we know who's in and out yeah. um, i think there's just some things that are much harder from home right like to collaborate or to just feel that kind of sense of community in person like that's what humans need so we will go back we'll always have an office um nice. you know there's so many things like we're all attending all of these virtual conferences and events now but there's no there's no substitute for being in the hallway in you know a conference center and be like oh justin have you met rocky oh you must and connecting people and that is the same thing as being in an office where you might overhear someone talking about something and you need all that institutional knowledge and all that individual genius to go, oh, that was like the time that that client asked about this. And that's that's where ideas bubble up and where things like and processes improve. So you will definitely like go back. We can't, um, we can't wait. But, you know, when the world opens. I hear you. CJ, Russ? We're oh, going the question? To go back. Oh, go ahead, Russ. Oh, I'll ask CJ. So I'm assuming you guys are going to go back to that beautiful facility that you have. The same with Pittsburgh. Yeah, okay. We'll go back I mean, in phases. The newsroom already is more or less back. Um, and the, the rest of us will kind of go back in phases. Nobody before January, though. Yeah. And, and so then you already had a pretty, uh, like, a, like a, a flexible, you know, kind of schedule as it was. So yeah. which is kind of nice folks. Um, Matt, I, I, you, I understand that you have a couple of questions that you go ahead and want to go ahead and ask as we wrap up. 
there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, uh, everybody. This is, this has been great. And we do have, uh, some, some good questions, uh, some of them, which we've already answered, but, um, I think this question's, uh, probably geared towards, uh, Russ, you talked, uh, a lot of it, a lot about, um, audio over IP devices. Is there any recommendations that you can make of, you know, I mean, I know you mentioned Comrex. I know they make Opal. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you using that somebody, um, I am using Comrex and we um, have the five, uh, it's a unit with five connections, a uh, single unit um, that's in the rack. And then that's a, that's a fantastic unit because they have an app um, uh, that can, it gives you pretty solid um, uh, audio mm -hmm. for anyone. And, and, you know, we had a daily talk show that we have a daily talk show the confluence and it, it was he it heavily used that and so now that, that's one thing there are some open source stuff out there i love open source um it takes a lot more tinkering and i can certainly um list those and send that after the fact i don't know that i can recall them that's not my strength right now but uh i can list some of them that could be used in open source uh but tyline also has one i've used um a similar thing you buy those by the seat so you buy a one seat or a 10 seat right and you can connect 10 devices 10 apps um the comrex itself has a, its own unit that will connect to, to wireless or wired and those are more for you know as cj spoke about how hosts were hosting from their their homes uh you know that's that connection and um, it's just different use cases, you know, and so for, for specifically for, for the, for the remote connections, um, it really depends on money, you know, uh, and, uh, I think Comrex is probably on the higher side of that. Um, you know, but I would love to share that and the open source stuff. If we can get that out to everybody afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, uh, well, this is a, a question I really for, for everybody here uh, in terms of uh, mental health, as has there been any adjustments or changes to say company policy or PTO? Have you seen, you know, like, you know, I, I know I've suffered from anxiety during this time. Are you, you know, kind of like starting to see that and, you know, what, what are you doing to deal with that? And no, sorry, I'd love to take that one. Okay. Definitely, you're seeing, you know, definitely it's more of a thing for sure. We, we've always kind of had an open door, pay time off policy. So if you're, you're somebody feeling sick, somebody's not able to perform that day, we're very much open. You know, all it takes is a quick Slack message and, and we're open to work with everyone pretty much. You know, we've seen, you know, a couple of things out of this that have had to happen is people are less, you know, we've more, I've almost seen people are more apprehensive to say, hey, I need to take a day off because of this, because they don't want, you know, with everything going on. And so we really tried to be proactive with reaching out to folks. And then even in, even in job dialogues and when we're talking with team members, we're, you know, bringing up the point of, you know, how are you? How, you know, beyond just, okay, we're talking about work, how are you performing, all that jazz. But more importantly, how are you as a person? You know, how can we help improve your life? Are you feeling overwhelmed? How is that anxiety? And so just really having those conversations and making sure that you're bringing it up and making it an open thing that everyone knows, Hey, I, you know, are we're in this to make everyone's lives better and we want our folks to you know, be live happy and very healthy lives. And so just making sure you're having conversations around that, I think has been probably the key to being able to, to be able to help, help that problem along for sure. Yeah, we have a, uh, our HR, person our team our single single team member and she's fantastic uh was early and often with our employee assistance program which i believe comes through our insurance company uh but i'm not sure but there and it, it's she was you know always making sure that the employees knew they had this uh tool at their disposal to call and 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 that was I mean, I personally used it and it was fantastic. I know others have, and it was just great. It was great to be able to remind that, you know? So that was how, uh, I don't know that we talk, I don't talk about it 
directly with anyone, but you know, uh, to what Justin was saying, we were just communicating to communicate out with others. That was our message. Please take the time. And they, you know, our leadership team was early and often with that. Do yourself first. Please take care of yourself yeah. first. Our stuff will get done. This is radio. No one will die. I'd like yeah. to say we're not saving babies. <laughs> it's like if you need I don't know to about take that. Either. Yeah, I mean, of course, you have to do the news and stuff, but it's like, you know, you, you have to be mentally there, and this is not the normal time. So don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, definitely. Super curious, actually. I'm like, Sharon, how did the COVID only channel in Slack go? Or how did that concept work out? Yeah, it was That's good. I mean, it was just, it was, um, it was really important for us to like protect everyone from that if they didn't like you don't get a choice about what you see in the general chat and so it, it worked yeah. really well it's still active people remind like if someone drops it into general it's like hey this is for covid like and we try and really keep it clean um and off to the side it's been good it also gives some employees a place to vent about stuff you know in a safe way as well because they know that that's what that channel's for and some people are like melbourne's in probably the hardest lockdown of all around the world right now like we've had curfews we're not allowed past you know a couple of miles past our houses um and everyone's really struggling and so it's important for them to have a place where they can go this is absolute bs or you know and have other people try and lift them up or um so no that that concept worked really well for us we're pretty um pretty pleased with how it's been going um and you can just choose to mute the channel if you don't want to as well. But it, it, yeah, it's it's nice to sometimes know that there's people there if you need them and otherwise you can just look at memes all day and that's fine too. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's a good Perfect. Idea. Um, is there any other questions, Matt? There was, there was one question I, and I think it kind of ties into what we're talking about here. Really just a, um, a great question about personal time and, and work time and sort of like the blending that's happening right now. Uh, the question specifically is, uh, how do you uh, differentiate those or are you bleeding them together? Is, is your personal life and your work life? And, you know, and I know for a few of us that that's very much the case, but for your employees, um, are, you, are you being you know, proactive and, and saying, oh, you need to go home or you're, you're done or what are you doing here? You need to turn off the computer. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've addressed that in a couple of ways. And again, our CEO has been the most remarkable leader through all of this. And early on during the lockdown, he said for the first three weeks, take whatever time you need to, to take care of yourself, to take care of your family. Don't report it as vacation or sick time. Just take the time and let your supervisor know. And people took advantage of that and it really helped. And the, the HR department sent all of us a link to the Calm app. If you haven't tried the Calm app, I recommend it highly. It's very relaxing. And then just two weeks ago, uh, our CEO mandated that each of us take one day for fun in the month of October. So by the end of the month, we have to take, we have to take one day off to just do something fun do not check email, do not have any screen time, take a personal day. It's great. Awesome. Nice. I think my CEO is is on this webinar listening in. So if you're taking- <laughs> but It's fun time every day, Matt. <laughs> was, that, was that one day in October or did you say 10 days in October, no, CJ? It's one, it's one day, I wish it were 10. <laughs> I'm not, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, we're starting to get up against the clock. I just wanted to say uh, thanks to everybody for uh, participating in this and kind of sharing a little bit of their soul of what's been going on with this. I think that um, you know, I, 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 am, I, I am forever the eternal optimist or known as the cheerleader in the industry. So I think that this is actually, all of us are gonna come out stronger of this just because not only because what we do and the professionalism that we have, but also because the fact of the formats that we support and the connectivity that we have. And it's the reason why I've been in audio and radio my entire career, because I believe in that cohesion, whether it's podcast, linear, or any other type of uh, concept like that, I think it does give us that human connection that I think is sometimes missing. So I, I appreciate all of you, you know, continuing to do work and doing what you're doing. But um, if there are any other fire, a final notes from you, Matt, or anybody else? No? 
All right. Good. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope to see all of you soon in the flesh so I can touch you. And, then, and until then, keep up the great work. And uh, thank you for joining us today, guys. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. you for doing Thanks this. Thanks so much, everyone. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>